is it a sin or shirk to migrate for worldly reasons as mentioned in the hadith shirk no it is not migration leaving your muslim country to live in a non-muslim country is prohibited the prophet والسلام, said i have nothing to do with someone who goes and lives among the disbelievers or the idol worshippers in another narration he was giving the pledge of allegiance to a man and he asked him to do a number of things and among them is to not live among the disbelievers so basically speaking if someone migrates for worldly reasons if someone goes to work abroad in a non-muslim country to gain money to add some worldly value to his experience or life this is permissible if it is temporary but if he goes there and acquires a citizenship or lives there for good this is not permissible unless it has a number of conditions why is it not permissible life there is easy infrastructure is good people are treated equally so they say and claim uh, there's security there's no poverty there's no this and that there's no injustice these are banners and claims that if you look closely and scrutinize the lives of those who live there you would find that it is not true yes there is a lot of good in living in such non-muslim countries there might be a lot of fairness and justice overall there might be a higher standard of living but still it is a non-muslim country still there are numerous sins all around you you cannot trust your children to be brought up in an islamic fashion and in so many countries you are not allowed to practice your religion freely maybe in some countries you can but in the, the enmity and hatred towards Muslims especially uh, uh, immigrants is growing up and you can see that in the way they behave against Muslims if the Quran is saying of the fate which awaits the Western world including Britain and if your choice is to continue to live in Britain or in Netherlands or in Belgium that's your choice but I am saying to you that this is a ship that is sinking and no one can prevent it from sinking and when this ship sinks it will take all on board and perish they all perish Allah gave you a mind with which to think if you on board a ship which is sinking and you cannot prevent it from sinking that is the fate which awaits the civilization which is sunk in sin if you remain on board that ship you're very foolish you've not used your capacity to think but if you get off the ship of course the jar will make it as difficult as you can to make get off the ship but if you get off the ship you have a chance at least to get your wife to come off to get your children to come off your father and mother at this time they're saying son we are staying here you don't you're not going to get us to leave we are comfortable your wife is saying you can go I'm staying here your children are saying papa you can go we staying here so if you get off the ship at least you have a chance of saving them once you remain on board the ship everybody will perish the jar comes with a river and a fire but his river is a fire 
and his fire is the cool waters of a river. So where on the face of the earth you see the green pastures. The green pastures are where you have the hard currency, <laughs> the US dollar, the sterling pound, the euro. These are the green pastures because over here life is affluent. You're able to live in some prosperity. This is Dajjal's river. But this is in fact a fire. And over there where life is miserable, you can't even get a job. The money is worthless. People are suffering. And that looks like the fire. But that's the river. So I would go out without thinking. I will not even close my I go close my eyes and I live in Indonesia. Because yes, Indonesia is miserably poor. People are suffering. And yet I have never seen sweeter smiles, both from men and women. And uh, you know, there's a difference of a world between a natural smile and the smile of a politician, you know that. <laughs> the sweetest smiles I have ever seen in my life, both men and women, are in Indonesia, the poorest people. That's the purity of the heart. You look at the smile and you know the heart. So too in Pakistan, in the villages, in the mountainside, that's where you go when you want to make it drop. Don't move from here to Qatar. He said the time will come when a believer, in order to preserve his faith, would have to flee to the mountainside and to places where rain falls and take with him some sheep and goats, meaning that in order to preserve your faith, you have to withdraw from the world. You have to get off the grid. But that man said, I left Azad Kashmir and I came here 40, 50 years ago. And I have walked and walked and walked and walked and walked to build what I have. And you come to tell me to go back? He's angry. It's furious at me. He considers me to be evil because his son is listening to me. And the son wants to go back to Asad Kashmir. The son understands. But that generation which came, no, we come here to stay. So what do you do? If you understand and you realize Yes, this is the time for Hijra. Time to go back to Algeria, go back to Morocco, go back to Egypt, go back to Bangladesh, go back to Pakistan, go back to Afghanistan. But your wife says, honey, you could go, I'm staying. <laughs> your children say, Papa, you could go, we stay. But you also have your father and your mother. Sick. How can I leave my father and my mother? So my response is, they don't know it. They probably don't want to know it. Perhaps they never know it that this ship is sinking. No one can prevent it from sinking. It is divinely ordained. And when it sinks, all on board will perish. They don't know it. But you know it. 
So what is a sensible and intelligent thing to do? The foolish thing to do. You know, I can't get off the ship and leave my father and mother. I can't get off the ship and leave my children, leave my wife. So I'm staying on board. So the ship will sink and all of you will perish. That's not an intelligent response. The intelligent response is get off the ship. Even if you are one, your wife doesn't want to go, your husband doesn't want to go, your children don't want to go, your parents don't want to go, but you want to go, so get off the ship. And when you have gotten off the ship, you can make dua to Allah. With dua, all things are possible. And you can make effort. And it is possible that you might succeed. And they might get off the ship. So which of the two makes sense? Staying on board and everybody perishing? Or you getting off with the chance that you can get the others to get off? This is the one that makes sense of the intelligence. When you make a draft, don't go to live in the city, uh, Dhaka, Karachi, Cairo. No, because the Jal controls the cities. And Gog and Magog are most active in the cities. So safety and security lies in the remote countryside. I've just come from Albania. Masha Allah, they have lovely mountains in Albania. Perfect for Hydra. Pakistan has lovely mountains in the north. I, I went and I built it. Beautiful. So look for a place where there are mountains and look for a village. It's too late now to go and build the old village. Look for a village. 